Hey everybody, Bob Murnahan here, LeadGuitarTactics.com, and uh, this is lesson number three in a, a little mini series on the diminished scale. And uh, really, you know, I'm just kind of scratching the surface here. And what I really hope to do with this is, uh, first of all, give you some cool ideas to play, and second of all, maybe encourage you to get out there and do a little exploration check out some of these things that, that maybe seem a little strange or a little weird or maybe that you thought you had no use for, especially for those of you that complain about getting stuck in the pentatonic rut. This will definitely break you out of the pentatonic rut. So um, in the first lesson in this series, I just introduced the fingering for the diminished scale. In the second lesson, we talked about applying it in the blues, sort of like uh, Robin Ford applies the diminished scale when he uh, plays the blues. And in this third part, I want to talk a little bit more about soloing with the diminished scale. And this is going to be more over uh, just a vamp type situation. And this is going to be um, I'm using the C7 sharp 9 chord here. A lot of you might know this is the Hendrix chord because this is the, uh, the Purple Haze chord, you know. Um, so if you don't know, much about those types of chords, don't worry about it. If you are into that kind of thing and you're looking for some new sounds, then here you go. Now, um, I kind of picked this up from, um, there's uh, a couple people that, that do this extensively, and a couple of my favorites are John Schofield and Larry Carlton. And um, if you want to head over to YouTube and check out, uh, there's a song called Chank that John Schofield plays with Modesky, Martin, and Wood, and it's based but mostly around this uh, sharp nine chord there in the key of D. Now we're doing ours in the key of C here. And you can hear uh, how he approaches this kind of thing. And I'm going to give you an idea of what's going on there in this lesson. So just a little bit of background here. What we're going to be doing is very similar to what we did actually in the Robin Ford Blues lesson. We're going to be shifting back and forth between a C minor pentatonic scale and the C diminished. And the diminished scale we're going to be using is the half step whole step. And I decided to do something a little different for this lesson. I'm going to use uh, box five for the pentatonic scale. Just, uh, again, just for some variety sake. So we'll be here at the fifth fret. And uh, here's uh, the tonic for the scale. It's actually here on the eighth fret on the sixth string. So there's actually my C minor pentatonic scale right here in the fifth fret area. Now, again, this C half step whole step diminished scale that we're going to be using is exactly the same thing that we learned uh, in the first lesson of this series. We, we started, uh, you know, using like a G half step whole step. So now we're just using a C half step whole step. So here's my C right here, again, in the eighth fret on the sixth string. And there's my half step with the little finger and then my whole step up here. And from this point, really, we're just doing our one, two, four. One, three, four pattern that we learned back there in lesson number one. Whoops, trying to talk and play at the same time and got my one, three, fours, one, two, fours mixed up there. So, uh, again, if you want to play the scale with the one, three, four, one, two, four fingering, you're going to be starting actually in the sixth fret on the sixth string on a B flat. And there's our one, three, four, one, two, four. Sorry about the mistake there. I hope I didn't confuse anybody with that. Um, let me finish it out for you here. Once again, trying to talk and play at the same time. Not my forte, as is uh, singing and playing at the same time. Singing is actually not my forte at all. Uh, especially singing and playing at the same time. Now, again, I'm going to probably, when I'm playing this in a solo, I'm probably going to stick up here uh, to the first four strings again, just to kind of keep it easier. If you want to venture down here to these lower notes, that's cool. And I also just want to give you a, a, a couple of examples. of uh, These are a couple of diminished type ideas. The first one is definitely a direct ripoff of John Schofield. And uh, see so if you can get this one under your fingers. And so what you're doing here is you're actually gets all five to eight in terms of frets. So I'm going fifth fret, eighth fret on the fourth string. 5th fret, 8th fret, up here on the 2nd string. So it's... So I do that two times all the way through. And then the third time through, I'm going to 
actually stop here uh, on the fifth fret on the second string, and then I'm going to do that same sort of idea. That 5 8 thing again, but now I'm moving over to the third string and then up to the first string. And there's a bit of skipping around here. You can see I'm doing 5 8 on the third string, and then going up to 5 on the first string, and then back down to 8 on the third string, and then 8 5 on the first string. And 8, 5 on the third string. So the whole thing sounds like this. Which I just think is a really cool lick. And, uh, you know, it's kind of tough to stay with the fourth finger all the time here. You can do it. And I'm picking every note there. You can also stretch there with your third finger if you want. Uh, one of the things this lick starts off the beat. So if I'm counting one, two, three, four, one. And you can try to start that in other places rhythmically besides on the and of one, but it really works well if you start it on the and of the beat. It makes the notes come out in the right spot. Now another thing you can try instead of picking all those notes is to do hammer-ons. Right there, hammer-on, 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 hammer-on. Pull off, pull off. So all these places where you can slur, right there on the uh, fourth string and the second string to start off with, and then on the third string here, and then first string, third string, doing the pull-off. So it's a combination of hammer-ons and pull-offs. See if I can do that again for you without screwing it up. So uh, that's one of my favorite diminished sounding licks and again that's a John Schofield idea and uh, I think these are kind of John Schofield inspired ideas this next one is something I like to do a lot so I like to play these notes right here on the uh, third string and the first string again so I'm going first finger second finger here on the third string that's fifth fret to sixth fret and then I'm going up here to the first string on 6th fret to 5th fret, uh, fifth fret, and then on the 2nd string I'm doing 5 to 7 with a hammer on and I'm pulling off 8 to 5. So you'll hear me do that kind of thing a lot uh, if you see me playing live. Just that little combination of four notes there. And then from there you can kind of take off and go into the scale and do a little improvisational stuff. And uh, this scale, you know, again, it's going to tweak your ear a little bit if you're not used to hearing these kinds of sounds. Uh, but play around because there's all kinds of neat little things you can do, all kinds of little twists and turns inside of the scale there. Um, so back to the, the task at hand here, uh, giving you a couple of little ideas that you can play. And um, I'm going to put a track on here. i got a C7 sharp 9 track for you. And so what we're going to do again is we're going to just sort of be moving back and forth between the C minor pentatonic scale and then slipping into the diminished scale and then back to our C minor pentatonic scale. So we're just going back and forth and the C minor pentatonic scale, that's our safe haven kind of thing where we're not going to get any notes that tweak the ear. And then when we slip into the diminished scale, that's when things are going to get a little bit outside and a little bit crazy. And uh, as you continue to solo, you're going to find out that um, it's that combination of the tension and release, you know, the, the, and you don't have to play notes that are wrong to create tension, but, um, and again, you know, I'm using the, the term wrong, and that's probably not a good term either. Um, what I mean is more outside of the chord when I say wrong, but that doesn't necessarily make them wrong notes. If you use them properly, you can really get away with playing anything. But what I'm trying to say, those notes that kind of tweak your ear a little bit, the tension notes, if you want to use those, you can, and you just have to know how to resolve them. So again, as you're playing your solos, 
you got tension, release, tension, release, tension, release. And you want to keep trying to build that tension as you go through, uh, just like a, a, a good story writer would do or a good movie, you know, that the plot builds as the movie goes on. And we're building up to that climactic point where you get that release at the end. And that's what you want your solos to do. So let me throw the backing track on here and just play a little bit and demonstrate this idea for you. And I'll give you the backing track and uh, you know, I'll tab out a few bars of, of what I'm playing here for you to kind of get you started off on, uh, in some direction. And then, uh, you know, when you get to the fork in the road, take it. All right, I'll be back in just a second with the track. Okay, I've got our backing track queued up here, and as I mentioned earlier, it's basically just a C7 sharp 9 all the way through the track, and it gives us a chance to explore this uh, idea of moving back and forth between the C minor pentatonic and the C diminished scale using the, the half step, whole step version. So I'm just going to play a few bars here and explore some sounds, and then I want you to put the backing track on and do the same, see what you can come up with, and I think you'll find lots of interesting sounds here, so here we go. best of my abilities and um, you, you know just, again just maybe a little inspiration for you or whatever and um, really spend some time playing with this this is the way you'll get these new sounds under your fingers and start to get them in your ear and uh, you know, don't be afraid to uh, to screw things up you know, I don't think that was the, the cleanest performance ever in the world there that I just did and uh, that's what happens sometimes when you're going for it you go for something and uh, you kind of get tangled up with your fingers or whatever and you might have noticed there that, that when I really just kind of start to play the, the normal fingerings that you work on sometimes kind of go out the door and you kind of have to go with what's working in the spur of the moment so that means like we talked about earlier it might mean some stretching it might mean some some unusual fingering combinations you might find yourself in a position where you want to get a note and uh, and you just have to get it with the best finger available all right, there you go. I hope you enjoy this, and if you have any questions, you can leave them, and uh, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them for you. And uh, the main thing is, uh, you know, apply this immediately. You heard me say that a lot, but that's the way you really get these sounds working for you. And uh, there's so many places to go with this scale. I'm sitting here thinking of things I wish I would have talked about, and I didn't. Maybe I'll come back with a part four, see how it goes, but uh, anyhow, Check out the first three parts and uh, get cracking on the diminished scale, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.